Okay, hello and welcome. So today, I'm very happy to say that we are releasing the Tense Computer Improviser V1. It is by no means totally finished in development, but it is up and usable. We can make music with it. It's sort of fully functional as a computer improviser. So um, it's not going to be a build along video today. It's going to be showing uh, the progress and uh, the changes that I made since last time and also how to use it. So we'll begin by just showing how to use it. So no programming whatsoever, but just you open the patch and get going. So it has a couple dependencies that I should mention. So in the package manager, it's important that you have, uh, let's see, installed packages. We're going to need to have um, ML star, and you're going to need to have uh, the Flucoma library, which is where Fluid Audible Edge is something else, I believe. Uh, there it is, Fluid Corpus Manipulation. Um, so those two are the only two um, external packages that are required. Um, you'll want to initialize it so you can hear your input. So let me turn up the amplification a bit here on the guitar. Great. Um, and then one could uh, either load in as a single audio file using this replace button here. Um, the uh, the audio you want to use as a corpus, or you could load a whole folder of audio files, or you could record. So I'm going to record a little of this guitar in um, to use the audio corpus. And it's we're not going to spend a lot of time building a corpus today, uh, so this is just to show. So I'll just play a few harmonics or something. Okay, so then we'll do onset detection. So let's turn that down a little bit, put the minimum slice length up a little bit since I wasn't doing any rapid playing there that I'd wanna catch and slice up. Do onset detection, so 19. That's exactly right, because we did six, 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 and then one quarter of the end. So amazing, perfect. Um, and then step two is the analysis. So this is not gonna take long now. So there's all our samples. Um, but if you were doing, say, like 10 minutes of audio, that could take a full minute to work and, and the patch will sort of seize up while it's doing that processing. Great. Um, and then all one needs to do to be able to play music with this is just turn it on and it should work. So um, that's basically it in terms of how to make it work. There are some, you can also control the behaviors, which ones are being used manually. Um, and I'll get into that in a moment, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. So let's go into what updates I've done since the last video. So going back into this view, well, actually I'll show here, manual controls has, has been added to the UI um, and also the on and off button has been added to the UI and then this brain has been added to the UI. So let's go into here and look at what has changed. Very little here has changed except that the processing, which are the delay effects, these dynamic delay effects that I've added, uh, go to this processing, um, what's it called? Uh, these levels there, right? There's just a bit of routing that's changed. I deleted the scratch pad for the rhythmic devices because uh, that wasn't actually being used for anything. Uh, and I, well, I changed my ADC because I was using the guitar, but I'll, I'll put that back to one uh, before I upload it to GitHub. Um, okay, so what has changed in behaviors? This has changed a bit. So I've reorganized this. So now we have these different uh, types here, and this will monitor what is on and what is off. And then in the controls, we have uh, the ability to um, disable some 
from even the possibility of them being used. So I've added a couple of new um, behaviors since the last video. So there's these detuned was ones. So these essentially randomize uh, to a certain extent um, the playback speed of samples as they're triggered. And so you get this detuned effect. And so say you wanted to perform with the improviser, but you didn't like this behavior or just didn't suit what you were doing, you could block those and they would never be, um, yeah, see the two detuned types there, they would never be used um, or they'd never be called upon because when one of these uh, behaviors was is called upon to be selected at random, if it hit this one, this gate sub patcher would sort of reject it by sending it to the right outlet, which would then be sent uh, back to the randomization. And so if it was selected again, it'd be sent back again until uh, we finally don't get a number that is blocked and we go to one that uh, is a possibility. So just to show this, if I block them all except for um, this envelope inverse one, then we'll get one of those 100% of the time. Yeah. Now they're all on. turn that off. Um, so yeah, you get the idea. Um, so that can be useful if you only want to, uh, if you sort of prefer certain settings over others um, or certain behaviors over others. Okay, so that's essentially it for the update on behaviors. Um, as I said, I did build more and alter some of the behaviors themselves, but I, I'll leave it to you to look into that. Um, and um, I would love to see people sort of come up with ideas for behaviors and implement them or suggest them to me and I can build them. Um, but yeah. So now if we go into the brain. So this is this is really the major sort of new part. So this is what is uh, being used when the whole patch is turned on or off. So when it's on, this uh, part becomes active and it will uh, decide what behaviors are being used. So when it's first turned on, we have it, uh, it opens up this gate, which allows for a first attack to come through. So the first onset that's detected after turning it on will trigger some behavior or some behaviors to be turned on. And so let's say uh, it makes it down, we'll skip over this for now, but if it makes it down to say this, it will turn off all the previous behaviors that are maybe already on, and then it will choose randomly from the reactive behaviors as opposed to the rhythmic behaviors. So just quickly, if I go back into here, the rhythmic behaviors are all the behaviors where um, they rely on uh, a pulse that is in the music being played into the patch or the sound being played into the patch. And the reactive ones uh, don't have any kind of pulse or metrical um, sense to them. All right, let me go back to the brain. Okay, and so then the other two ways that behaviors are changed or, um, yeah, one behavior turned off, another one on, and so forth, is if, not, if there are no onsets for five seconds, that will initiate a change of behavior. And then uh, after, th uh, by default, 35 onsets, it will have a 50-50 chance if you go in here, it decides uh, you send it a bang, it sends out a zero or one. So if it's a one, therefore 50-50 chance, it will trigger a change of behaviors. Uh, and then, but each time it does that, it also randomizes slightly how many onsets are detected. So just to make it so it's not so even all the time. So it can be up to 100 or could you be as low as one and then you get rapid changes of behavior. Uh, this is asking Essentially, is there a pulse in what is being heard? I need to improve this a little bit. I should also incorporate the BPM confidence because if it hears nothing for a long time, it thinks it's a pulse because it's not getting any variation between attacks. Um, so in any case, so it's a little buggy right now, but the, the idea essentially is that if there is a sense of pulse, um, then it will trigger, um, it will open up the left part of this gate uh, for when behaviors are changed and then the behavior behaviors that will be triggered will include uh, a rhythmic behavior or is likely to include rhythmic behavior. And if there is no sense of pulse, if it's not detecting a pulse, then it will not 
trigger our rhythmic behavior. It will only trigger reactive behaviors. And then these uh, trigger bang bang, trigger bang bang bang, and trigger bang 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 objects down here um, are deciding what behaviors are chosen. So the non-rhythmic ones are these two here. So this one will reset behaviors. This one will choose randomly from the reactive behaviors. This one will reset behaviors, choose randomly from a reactive behavior, and then have a 50-50 chance of choosing a second reactive behavior. So you could have two on at once. And then the two rhythmic ones here are, uh, again, 50-50 chance between the two of them. And you will get um, uh, reset the behavior, 50-50 uh, chance of reactive behavior, 50-50 chance of a rhythmic behavior, and then a certainty of a reactive behavior. And then this one is just a slight variation on that. Resets of behaviors, 50-50 chance of reactive behavior, 50-50 chance of a rhythmic behavior, and then the certainty of a rhythmic behavior. And so that's it in terms of how behaviors are moved between when it's on. So there's definitely room to expand upon that. You could include, say, um, how pitched or how, uh, or, or certain, uh, yeah, pitch confidence, for example, or, um, you know, any of the other sort of live analysis that's happening as variables that will decide what behaviors are chosen dynamically. But right now it's just kind of simple randomization, but taking into account if it's detecting pulse. And then the delay effects here are basically every time there's a change of behaviors, it'll also randomly change the settings on a reverse delay and a feedback delay. Um, so it's just kind of a, a very simple bit of processing on the live input that changes dynamically as you perform, which I sort of enjoy for whatever reason. And so the rev delay, it's a, it's a, it's a gen patch that is a subject of an earlier video. And the, um, uh, the feedback delay is, is just a simple, uh, yeah, feedback delay gen patch, um, where you have feedback and, and delay time, uh, there. And so it just... Every time there's a change in behavior, it, it will um, also affect how those delays are working, but it all is, is fairly subtle, I would say, and also you can sort of turn them off just by doing that or have them be more present by turning them up. Um, and that is, I believe, it. So there's been a little cleanup otherwise, um, but that is, uh, that's it for the Tense Computer for Improviser V1. So for those of you who have followed this from the beginning, um, thank you. I'm going to keep updating this um, every now and then. I would love to, if anyone is sort of building along, I'd love to see, uh, hear how that's going. I would love to hear if you've come up with interesting ideas maybe I didn't think of that could be incorporated. Um, yeah, I hope, that, uh, I hope that other people are as sort of excited as with computer improvisation as I am and all these sort of possibilities in Max for it. Uh, so that's it for today. Um, again, thank you for following along and um, until next time.